Hey, welcome back everybody. I'm Ham Radio Dude and Redifus recently contacted me said, would you make a video on these latest GMRS radios we have, the RB23. And because they're IP67 rated, I was ecstatic. I said, absolutely send me a radio. I'll put it through the torture test and we'll see what happens. So like any good person, I get these radios in the mail and there's one big problem. See, these radios can't actually transmit on GMRS. Well, they can transmit on GMRS, just not legally. When you open up this radio and you look inside here, there's an FCC ID. And the FCC ID that's on here, the problem is, is it doesn't exist in an FCC database. Which leads me to believe that these radios aren't actually certified to be used on GMRS. But I really like the concept of what these radios were going to offer. Being IP67 rating, and a very basic, easy to use radio. A channel switch on the top, a push to talk, and programmable buttons on the side. And by the way, this radio did come with a programming cable uh, for this radio in particular, and a few other model redivices. And also the battery that was on this radio, it was only 1800 milliamp hours, but I thought it might be sufficient, especially because there was no digital display. So being bummed out that I couldn't use this on GMRS, what was I gonna do? hack the radio. I was able to modify some code and look into a data file which contained I believe what is hex and I was able to see that there was a sequence of how things were programmed for this radio and I was able to program it in the amateur radio bands. Now the nice thing about being an amateur radio operator as well as a GMRS license holder is in the amateur radio bands you're allowed to experiment and that's what I did. I set out to program this radio and modify it to work in the amateur radio bands, which it now does. And along the way, I was able to figure out how to convert things from narrow band to wide band. So I'd like to take a look at that just real quick and show you how I hacked this radio. So if you were to get one of these for ham radio, you could hack it yourself. So first things, let's head over to redivis.com and I'm in the GMRS section. Now, if you're not aware, in the United States, in order to operate a GMRS radio legally, you have to have a license and the radio must be Part 95 certified. Here I'm just going through some of the specifications and features of this radio to include it being IP67 rated, as well as a GMRS radio that includes a battery, a belt clip, a hand strap, and a user manual. Like I said, I did get a programming cable with mine, However, I don't see any indication on the site that a programming cable is included, so you might want to check on that because this radio has to have a programming cable in order to have any kind of programming, even if you're not hacking the radio. But regardless, uh, there's a couple other features such as this radio being 5 watts or a half a watt. I have no way to test this as the antenna cannot be removed. Let's go ahead and go over to the support feature or support tab here and go to firmware slash software and download the RB23 software. Now when you do this, you're gonna go ahead and install it, and once it's installed, open up the RB23 software. It'll look like this. Once you open up the software, you're gonna see there's things you can change and things you can't change. An example of things you can't change would be the receive frequency and the transmit frequency, as well as the wide and the narrow option here and the radio. Additionally, you cannot change the low power settings on channels eight through 14, at least in the software here. And being that this is the actual file that should come with the radio, the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to back up this file and never edit it in case anything happens, you have a file to reference in the future. So go to file and save as, and then just choose a, a file to name it. I named mine test.dat. Once you've saved that file to whatever you named it, you're going to go ahead and download your favorite text editor or open your favorite text editor. I use Sublime Text because it's easy to read and it's nicely laid out. Once inside of Sublime Text, I open up that test.dat file, and what I see here is just a bunch of what I think is hexmodecimal. But after looking at this for a while, I discovered that there was a trend to it, or something that each line had in common. My first observation was that each line number, 1 through 30, correlates with the channel that is being programmed. And so, for example, channel 1 would be line 1. But my second interesting piece of information shows the receive frequency as the first block of eight letters. And this is exactly how I figured out what programmed frequency was in the radio. So 
So the interesting thing is, is if I wanted to change the frequency, I could just change that first block of eight for the receive, of course. And the second block of eight is the transmit frequency. So if I wanted to change that, I could as well. But a couple of notes. Each channel's third block of eight digits happens to deal with CTCSS or DCS tones. And the thing about that is, is you really don't need to change much there because that could all be changed in the internal program. But the last block of eight is where it gets really good. The last block of eight is where you could actually change not only your power settings, but you could adjust your narrow and your wideband modes. And so this will be relevant for amateur radio on the wideband. And basically what it came down to is there was different settings that I found. 0000 was just a low power setting, but then you had 2000 was just high power setting, both of those being in narrow band. In here, if you typed in a value of 3000, you'd get high power in a wide band. And I thought that was pretty neat. But I do need to make one note, and that's on line three. Line three has an E, 200 E. And that E that you see there is gonna be required. If you don't have that E there, it'll actually turn off your voice prompts in your settings. Now I have actually went ahead and made a file that I call working for. And what I did here is I created a code plug or the file where it's all the same frequency and all the same information so that you could just download that and have that as a template. I'll go ahead and provide a link below. But what you're going to do is once you modify all those frequencies to your liking and your repeaters to your liking, go ahead and save the file and we're going to open it again with the Redibus software. Once you go ahead and open that file up that you just saved, you're going to go into the code plug software and you can see now the receive and transmit frequencies have changed and you can go ahead and change things to your liking like your tones and everything along those lines. So if you had a repeater that had a tone, you would put it in here as well. And once you get everything to your liking, go ahead and save the file again. And then finally, as long as you know what you're doing and you feel confident, you're going to write to the radio. Now I say as long as you're confident because there are certain things if you change, you might actually break your radio. And I don't want to be responsible for that. So make sure that you have a general idea of what you're doing or follow the template. Once you're done writing to the radio, you should be able to reread it and still see 30 channels. If you see eight channels and only eight channels, that means you coded something wrong and on one of the channels, it's causing the radio to go into a factory mode. So I guess the only other thing left to do is to test this radio here to make sure that it's gonna be receivable on this band here. This is W9FFF testing. W9FFF clear. It works. Until next time, I'm Ham Radio Dude 73. Goodbye for now.